was it was definitely one of the coolest experiences that we've had at, at the Museum of Natural History. Good afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching. Thank you for joining us. Today we are coming to you from the Kenneth C. Griffin Exploration Atrium at the Museum of Natural History in New York City. We just got done at the Davis Family Butterfly Vivarium exhibit. Um, it is a paid additional exhibit. We're gonna put some footage of that in here for you. Um, it was a lot of fun. The kids had a blast with the butterflies. They're flying all around you. They were landing on my shirt. Um, it really was a great experience. And this new area here of the museum is absolutely gorgeous. This is our first video that we're doing from the Museum of Natural History, but we've been coming here several times over the last year um, because we became members and this new area is just so cool. So this whole area is known as the Richard Gilder Center for Science, Education, and Innovation. So that's what the whole area is called. We were in the atrium when I first did the intro. Now I've got to go find the family because I don't know where they went. In my search for the family, I stumbled upon the uh, Hall of African People. And uh, I'm just going to kind of walk around in here while I try to find them. I don't know where they went, but... I found Kaylee. <laughs> oh, there's Nick, all right. We found you guys. Well. All right, so I found the family. We are now gonna head back into the Gilder Center area, um, do some exploring there since it is the newest addition to the museum. And then we have a reservation at 1145 for another add-on ex experience, which is the uh, Invisible Worlds experience. So that one looked really cool in the pictures I saw online. So hopefully, the, uh, hopefully it'll be fun for the kids. Now we're coming up on the Lewis V. Gerstner Jr. Collections Core, which we're gonna see what this is. Got a whole collection of box turtle shells here. Pretty cool. So the fish in this display here have been cleared and stained, which basically means they've had everything removed just so you can see the bones and cartilage in the fish. That is pretty cool looking. I mean, they've got all different kinds of fish in here. Look there, look that thing. We've got some fossils from a... Ooh, look at that. We've got some fossils here. Is that a mammoth or is that an elephant? Mammoth. Colombian mammoth. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And then we've got beehives here of all different kinds. Look at all those beehives. That is pretty awesome. And here is a view from the other side of the atrium. So I did my intro against that wall over there. Um, but they have all this stadium seating here where you can just kind of sit and take in all this architecture. There's also like pathways people are walking on up there. So I want to get definitely get up there and check that out as well. We have now gotten off at the third floor, which is way busier than the second floor was. Um, again, we've got another little access hole here where you can see down in. Not that great of a view from here, but still pretty cool. We got a little light right there. And when you get off the elevator on the left here, they've got more of these display cases with all kinds of different animals. There's a back display right here. Um, looks like we've got some frogs in formaldehyde. We've got bugs and spiders and beetles. Look at the birds. And it just keeps on going. But yeah, so the third floor is where the um, Invisible Worlds display is, I believe. And that's where we're going to be heading next. Look at the size of that hadrosaur footprint. Oh, no, they... And right over here, when you come up the staircase to your right, the elevators are back over that way. This is where the Invisible Worlds exhibit is, and we're gonna be heading in here at 11.45. 
And then all the way at the end of the hallway on the third floor will take you into the Pacific People's Hall. And then turn them around. Oh, there's Court. And we decided to come into the Pacific People's Hall um, just because we still have about 15 minutes to kill before we can get into Invisible Worlds. And this is actually one of my favorite halls at the museum because this stuff is so cool. Here is a Maori storehouse. Oh, I thought you said shorthouse. It's carved in New Zealand, actually. Pretty awesome. Look at those masks, Nick. Those are pretty cool, huh? Look at the freaky ones. Oh boy, Kaylee. Look at that, huh? <laughs> Nick, look how big his nose is. <laughs> we're gonna head up to the fourth floor now and check out to see what that's all about. Um, and then we're gonna come back down to do the um, Invisible Worlds exhibit. And we have now gotten to the fourth floor. So this is where the David S. and Ruth L. Gotsman Research Library and Learning Center is. Um, it also says there's a studio over there, but we'll go check that out. We're going to go and take a peek in the library first. So this is the, uh, the library here. Unfortunately, it is only open Monday through Friday, but um, just to give you an idea of what it looks like on the inside, it's actually really cool. It definitely has, a, uh, has an old school library vibe to it with all the old books and statues and stuff. It's pretty cool though. And then at the end of the fourth floor, it takes you into the Hall of Dinosaurs. So, this was all closed off the last time we were here. Now it all makes sense because this is all brand new. So, this is the way back into the Gilder Center, this way here. All right, it's 11.45. Our time has come to head into the Invisible Worlds exhibit. Um, we're gonna go get checked in now. We tried to check in early and they told us we couldn't until 11.45, so it must be busy in there, but I have no idea what this is gonna be like. Let's go check it out and see if it's fun. And here is the Invisible World display. This is where we're gonna go in next. Not me anymore! 
just got out of the uh, Invisible World exhibit. Um, it does dump you into a gift shop. <laughs> um, it was amazing. It was such a cool, interactive experience. You're basically in a giant 3D room, um, and there's just, everything's happening around you. It was, it was definitely one of the coolest experiences that we've had at, at the Museum of Natural History. And here's the gift shop that it dumps you into. Um, What? Can I get something? Like what? What do you want to get? Get something. Yeah? The gift shops get us every time. Me, me and the absters are just walking around the gift shop. Thank goodness she's not old enough to say she wants stuff yet. We are going to try to see if we can eat lunch in the new restaurant that just opened up here. Um, we're going to see what the availability is, if you have to have a reservation, or if you can just walk in and sit down. We'll find out in a minute. So we can't bring the stroller into the restaurant. There was availability though, and you could walk in and get seated, but they don't allow strollers, and Abby's not big enough yet to sit in a high chair, so we're gonna have to head down to the good old cafeteria, um, which is usually pure chaos. We'll see how bad it is today. We have now made it down to the first floor. Um, there's another gift shop down here. No, this is just the Gilder gift shop. There's a huge one in the actual museum. There's another gift shop here. And then we've got the insectarium section over here, which we may check out later, but we have to get some food in these kids because they are being extra cranky. I got a burger. I got a cheeseburger. It came with uh, onions, lettuce, and tomato. I put some ketchup and mayo on there. Kaylee got the pizza. How's the pizza, Kaylee? Pretty good. Pretty good? It looks pretty good. Court just went up to get her food now. I would say if you're coming to the cafeteria, it can get really chaotic in here. Um, we divided and conquered. I went up with Kaylee. We got a court held the table. Now Court's going to get food with Nick. So it can get really busy in here. Um, today, fortunately, wasn't that busy. Um, we were here where it was like, we almost walked out because it was so busy that it was like, I don't even know if I want to bother getting food here. Just wrapped up lunch. Um, everything was good. Um, all in all, I think we spent about 60 bucks on food, which is a place like this is what you're gonna end up spending. Um, they've got everything you can think of. They've got pizza, burgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers. Um, they also have a whole hot food buffet and a salad bar as well. So there really is enough here where like anybody in your party will find something to eat. Um, one thing to note, they do not allow outside food or drink inside of the cafe market. So you have to buy something in there. You cannot bring food from outside in. There are other places where you can eat within the museum if you brought your own food. Found Court and Kaylee, and now we are making our way to the Gems. We, uh, we took a pit stop at the Insectarium because we had to walk through here anyway to get to the Gems and, and Stones. So um, we are going to walk around in here for a little bit and check out what they got in here. Look at 
this is awesome. Look at this, Nick. Nick, hands out your mouth. Finally made our way down to the first floor here to give you guys the view of the entire atrium here. And just how awesome this is. It's so cool. They've got quite the collection of Megalodon teeth here. Look at all those Megalodon teeth. Nick, look at these Megalodon teeth over here. Look at that, guys. Imagine there was a shop at the end of this with a bunch of sparkly gems. That is pretty cool. And we're heading into the halls of gems and minerals. So we're actually coming in from the back way, which we came through the origins of humans last time we get here, and now we're actually coming in through the back. This is pretty cool. They linked this all together here. Look at that. That looks like something you'd see in like a Marvel villain's back or something. So yeah. Just giving you guys a little shot here of what the actual gem hall looks like. They just redid this about a year or two ago. I think right before the pandemic, maybe they they redid this whole section here. It used to be like a multi-level, like carpeted ramp thing. Um, and they made it more of this like dark, more modern gray look. It's pretty cool though. Look at that. That is awesome. We are now in the meteorite hall. That meteorite is so huge. It's unbelievable. And then this is gonna segue into the origins of humans. So we're actually going to be going through here and then I think we're going to head up to go see the big blue whale and the marine life before we go to the shark exhibit. That's one big mosquito. <laughs> Imagine if that was real, that would be pretty crazy. Yeah, it would be flying around. Yep. Every day when we saw it, I'd go rushing in the house. <laughs> Me too. I was like, I was like, where are we going now? What are we going to see? Uh, I think the dinosaur. No, the big blue whale. Oh yeah. We're uh, we're making our way through the the New York State area that they have here, um, headed to the big blue whale, which is one of the icons of this museum. Um, Nick's fading very quickly. He's already noted he wanted to go home at least three times. So I think it's going to be big blue whale. The shark exhibit at 2.30 and then we're going to be heading home. There it is. The big blue whale. So this is all the whole hole on marine life. Got all your fish up here. Oh, including a human. See that? And downstairs is really where you're going to get the more of the dioramas scenes and everything up here is more just kind of like quick kid stuff and little displays with kind of tiny creatures and stuff in it but that blue whale is one of the icons of the Museum of Natural History. So they um they have member nights here where you can actually come and spend the night and then they set up cots in here and everyone sleeps under the under the big blue whale. Crab legs, anybody? Strong. Nick, could you imagine seeing something like that in the ocean? Yeah. Actually, in the science we We're now in the uh, the first floor here, underneath the big blue whale, and we're just waiting for Port to get down from the elevator. So there is an elevator here, so you can get strollers and wheelchairs down right there. Um, there's also staircases all around to get down to the lower level. Nick, they made a statue of you and put it in here. Look at that. Right there. Look at this guy. That's you right there. It looks just like you. <laughs> well, we were here for Nick's birthday because this is what he wanted to do. And he won the battle. We're uh, 
We're gonna skip the shark ex ex exhibit as well. Um, we're members here, so we don't pay for these extra exhibits when we come, so it's not a big deal if we skip them. But um, we're gonna head to gift shops up because the kids want to get a couple things. I don't know why. And uh, call it a day. So hopefully the gift shops are closed. Oh, it's right here. Kaylee's, uh, Kaylee's on the hunt for something over here. She's, she's pulling me in this direction. I don't know why yet. What do you see, kids? Super scratch and scratch, huh? Uh, it's, instead of them being papers that are all loose and can get everywhere, every time I had one of the paper ones that were loose, I kept losing all the papers. Oh. And the search for the squishy brain was a failure, so now we are, uh, okay. we're going to go and try to find another gift shop to see if they have it. I don't know. <laughs> We have now made it to the second floor of the main gift shop here at the museum. And this is where you're going to have a lot of your, wow, look at that shirt. I actually like this one. Oh, it's a Roosevelt shirt. $85. Wowzers. As we continue in here, uh, here's where you're going to get into more of your adult stuff. Um, got some clothing here. We're basically looking for jewel. We're looking for uh, for that squishy brain, and I don't think we're finding it. But I'll take you guys on a tour to show you all the other stuff that they have here. I don't quite understand the sushi bar. It just doesn't make sense. It's like why sushi? I don't. I don't get it. Now we are headed down. So we were just down there. That was where we were before, and now we're making our way down to the second floor here, which appears to be a lot of books. Let's check and see for a squishy brain. Lots and lots of books here. I don't know, Nick. I think we might be out of luck with the squishy brain. I don't see him. Yeah, and this is just, they've got puzzles, more books. No squishy brain, Nick. We'll have to try to find one online, I guess. Well, that's gonna do it from our day at the American Museum of Natural History. The Gilbert Center is awesome. It's definitely a cool new addition to the museum. It added a whole new layer of things to do here when you come out. I um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it's only about 2.30 now, so we made it from about 10.30 to 2.30. Um, Nick was just done and he's ready to head home. Um, but if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you were here and you enjoyed the experience that we shared today. And um, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. This is only the third video in our 2023 summer par from Fun Parent Summer of Fun series. And um, there's plenty more to come throughout the rest of the year. So subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, with that being said, we're done, son.